We're here for another episode of our Summer in the Psalms Bible study, where we are following up on what we talked about in worship at Church of the Covenant in Spartanburg. We welcome you to this Bible study. I'm Reverend Heather Humphreys. This is my husband, Brian. Um, and we're excited to share yet another uh, discussion about what's going on in the Psalms. And so on Sunday, we led worship with Psalm 51. Um, which is a personal penitential psalm. And we thought to follow up on that theme, we would go to Psalm 32. So here now, Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning, all day long. For day and night your hands was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near, near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Yeah, that's interesting. It really, um, and I know that it comes in Scripture before Psalm 51, but it, it's almost a sequel It is to Psalm 51. And I think it's really interesting how this psalm, more so than Psalm 51, I think, kind of goes into the inner life of confession. Yes. We see in Psalm 51 the need for confession, mm -hmm. the desperation before you get to that place, uh, knowing the great weight of sin. So that part that they have in common. But I think you're right. I think it takes it a step further. Mm -hmm. So what we see here is kind of the, um, the deep hurt, the mm -hmm. wasting away, uh, that the, the, the groaning that happens when we have this kind of unconfessed sin. It's, mm -hmm. it's we know we've done wrong. And, and each of us knows this. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know that, um, that when there is mental stress, mm -hmm. when there is anxiety and worry, it manifests in physical symptoms. Sure. Now, and at some point, and we see this in other places in Scripture, where they would have the understanding that physical problems meant mm -hmm. spiritual problems. And we're not saying that here. Mm -hmm. Here we're saying where there is distress mentally um, and anxious, is there anxiety and the heart is hurting, mm -hmm. where there is that kind of distress and hurt, there is manifestation in the body when it is left unchecked. And I think that's what we are hearing in this psalm today. Sure. And I think, you know, not just uh, kind of the individual body, but then also in the larger body. One of the most interesting things that I found in your sermon Sunday was uh, this idea that purge me with hyssop was a reference to a cleansing ritual for skin diseases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even today, people with skin diseases, uh, folks tend to look at them and say, wow, that's gross. I don't mm -hmm. want to be around that. Mm -hmm. um, I had a really good friend with psoriasis, who you know says, yeah, I get this all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that ritual was then done to bring them back into the community. Exactly. And when we've had those sins, when things have stood out painfully in our life, it's hard to return to normal, to go back to the community, to to not even just to go back, but to move forward. Yeah, and we've hurt other people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other people... Uh, you know, kind of give us that same, that's gross look. Mm -hmm. So then the work is not just that we have been personally forgiven. Mm -hmm. It is that I must go to that person I've hurt. 
I must make amends. I must reconcile. I must restore relationship. And so we, again, we can see where that happens through the community, through the body, um, that it has to happen beyond the self. It is the relationship with the, the self and, and God, but then it is that which connects us to others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's true. And, and it is very much, even within the, the larger body, a sickness, something in the body, something that's necessary, isn't functioning correctly. It, uh, there, there's uh, kind of this battle between parts of the body, and that needs to be corrected. And this, you know, I, I think it's interesting. You, you, we definitely should read this individually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and psychologically. Mm -hmm. I think that's appropriate. Uh, but I think it's also appropriate to read this, you know, in terms of uh, the body, the community. I think it's interesting in Psalm 51, and here as well, that we, in both cases, we get uh, that teaching is an important part uh, of being forgiven. Uh, you know, in, in Psalm 51, I'll teach transgressors your ways. Here, uh, you know, I will uh, watch you and teach you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a good question. Who's, who's saying that? Is that God saying that to us? Is that uh, the forgiven person saying that to people who are still uh, mm -hmm. sinful? It's, and we're it's not really question. sure from this psalm who is speaking. Right. Um, that is a, a unknown part of this. Because you can hear how it changes voices and, and different people mm -hmm. are talking. But not just the sinner and God. Sure. There's definitely more than that going on in this psalm. There's a lot of movement there. Uh, I think the teaching is important because it's not simply that being forgiven gives us a blank slate. It just It's not about just going back to where we were before. Uh, it's an opportunity to be better. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to move towards holiness. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we're forgiven. It's certainly, and it's supposed to restore relationships, but it's all supposed, also supposed to make us reflective and to be better people, mm -hmm. uh, people who understand what, what went wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to share this with you. Um, several years ago, uh, I remember reading uh, a, a kind of an ongoing piece uh, by Dove Seidman. Dove Seidman's not a pastor. He's not a theologian. He's not a Bible scholar. He's a business writer. But he noticed that apologies from CEOs, celebrities, sports figures are really not that great. I mean, you know, how, how often have you heard, I'm sorry if you were offended? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I mean, that's not an apology. Um, Simon had some ideas about what makes a good apology, and I'd really like to share some of those with you. First of all, he said, apologies should create vulnerability and be therapeutically painful. And not just painful for the sake of hurt, but therapeutically painful. It should heal as it hurts. Apologies must be authentic and not an excuse. An apology can't have ulterior motives and be a means to an end. They must probe deep into the personal or organizational values that permitted the offense. Apologizers need to conduct a moral audit by looking themselves in the mirror and asking, how did I get here? And how did I drift from the person I aspire to be? They must encourage feedback from the aggrieved. This includes truly opening up to input and two-way conversation during and after an apology and embracing ideas as to how to improve. And finally, they must turn regret into a real change in behavior. The new behaviors they elicit must be continuing, reinforced by a sustained investment in avoiding the same mistakes in the future. I think that's actually what we see here in the psalm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we get this line, uh, which I think is great. Um, Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, or he else it will not stay near you. Um, you know, don't have to have this continual cycle mm -hmm. of wrongdoing and uh, being called out and apologizing, but rather learn from this situation. Be someone whose temper can be curbed, not just by the bit or the bridle, but by learning. So there's a lot to learn, I think, about apologies, about um, seeking 
um, to get that reconciliation back mm -hmm. in relationships and in community. Um, but also, I think I've just called to mind, and while this is still like one of the seven big penitential mm -hmm. psalms that we find throughout the whole entire book of psalms, um, it's still a note of praise. And we start with, happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven. But I think why it's such a note of praise is that no matter what, it took us like four and a half verses before um, of telling why this person was wrong and, and mm -hmm. transgressions, and then God forgave. Because God's forgiveness is simple and easy. Not that it was easy on us to confess mm -hmm. or apologize, but God easily forgives us. Mm -hmm. There's abundance of a forgiveness that comes from God. Um, there is always a source of forgiveness there. And so it is praiseworthy to know that we can continually come to God for this, yes. that we can find healing and restoration there, and that can teach us how to do the hard work of apologizing and seeking out healing and reconciliation and restoration mm -hmm. in our relationships with others. So, um, and on that note today, that we can go and find forgiveness in God. Not that God wants us just to have a clean slate, but God wants us to learn, to be able to show others, to know the hard work of apologizing and to know how good it is for our bodies and our souls and our relationships and our love of God to seek forgiveness, and to, to share our confession. So I hope that you enjoyed this continued journey in the psalm. We hope to continue to see you in worship and in Bible study. Thank you.